Good morning, makers, and welcome to a very special Halloween edition of our Saturday morning craft along. So as you can see, I've done a little dress up today, and I wonder if anyone at home is getting in the Halloween spirit. I hope you're ready to join us for some special pumpkin carving and pumpkin decorating crafts today. And I will just want to um, ask you guys in the chat if you can guess what my costume is. And we were chatting about it last week and maybe we would do something Harry Potter related. So this is my my little Harry Potter kind of take on <laughs> a costume. And I want to guess, see if anyone can guess uh, who I'm trying to be. And so if you're joining us live, please say hello in the chat. Please let us know your name and where you're watching from, what city you're in. We want to know where all our viewers are tuning in from. We are coming to you live from Kitchener, Ontario. So welcome. Today we have a very, very exciting craft. Now Halloween is one of my favorite times of year. I just love all of the opportunities to be creative. And that means getting to dress up, play with makeup, and get some creative uh, crafts going on. So obviously pumpkins are the number one thing. and But you can be creative with all sorts of decorations around your home. And just like little gifts if you feel like being, you know, friendly and <laughs> giving gifts to people. There's lots of Halloween crafts out there. So um, today we're focusing definitely on the pumpkins and we're getting a little creative with some sculptural stuff too. So we're going to be making these really cool creepy vine arms that you can stick right into your pumpkin. They're pretty simple to make and they look really, really cool. So first we're going to start off with our um, with our pumpkin carving. But before we get going, of course, we want to talk about the prizes this week. And so last week we had we were running a contest for your circuit buddies. So all of those Halloween themed uh, block block buddy bots. <laughs> um, and we had you asking you to submit your photos of your finished project. So we did our draw this morning and we are happy to announce that our winner for this week is Kira. So congratulations, Kira. Thank you for submitting your photo and we'll be getting you our electronics learn to solder prize pack out to you very, very soon. And then now this, this is a new opportunity to win this week. We have a new prize pack and I'm actually wearing it on my head. <laughs> it's not the wig, but we're going to be giving away some tools to make these fun little ears. And this is a little sneak peek for next week because this is actually the craft we're going to be creating. We're going to be getting creative with our sheep's wool and we're going to be doing some needle felting. So that's how these ears were made. They're made of sheep's wool and they have a little barrette, a little hair clip in them that you can just clip right into your hair or onto your wig. Um, and it's a fun little quick last minute costume because of course next week is Halloween. <laughs> and... Um, so if you're making your costume on Halloween day, it means you've left everything to the last minute. But you know what? We still have you covered. <laughs> we can still have a little dress up time and the needle felting goes really quick. So I just want to show you what we're going to be giving away it is actually a special mold. Now this is a 3D printed um, plastic shape that is the shape of the cat ear. And these are just an example of the felted hearts that if you have our felting kit, you already know how to make these. So. You could probably use the heart mold to still make the ear shape because it's very, very similar, but our winners this week will get the special uh, 3D printed mold. Okay, so please say hello in the chat and that's how you get entered into the draw for at the end of the show. So please stick around until the end. Um, otherwise, we don't know how to get in touch with you, okay? So if you do win the viewer prize today, please make sure you send us an email, okay? Because sometimes we don't know who you are yet. If you're a camper, we can get in touch with you, but if you're a new viewer, we need your your contact information, okay? So I just wanna get uh, started and show you all the fun tools I have. So I'm gonna switch you over to, yes, this camera. And I wanna show you all the fun things that I've gotten ready for today. So of course we have our pumpkin, and then I have some pictures that I've printed out of uh, inspirational designs. Whenever I work on a project where I don't really have a concrete vision in my head of what I want to make, I always go to the internet. Pinterest is great for collecting images, uh, Google image search, and finding some inspirational images. There's a lot of amazing pumpkin carvers out there. And um, yeah, so I've just printed off a sample of ones that I'm kind of gravitating towards just to have something to reference when I'm working. 
And I want to focus on some kind of a, a face today. And that means like big teeth. I'm not sure if I want it to be scary or silly. So maybe you guys can let me know what you want to see. You want me to do something a little creepy or you want me to keep it kind of friendly and silly? Let me know in the chat. Okay, we can make some decisions. Um, I also found this really cool picture. Um, and we know the artist's name. I believe it's uh, Michael Brown. We'll link it in the description. <laughs> He's got some fantastic carvings. But he uses the vine arms um, and he and so it's more 3D sculptural that way. So I thought that was a really cool one to try to like emulate and and copy. Um, and then the last thing I have here is a printout of a design. So I will show you how to transfer, how I like to transfer um, designs right onto the pumpkin using sort of a carbon copy method. And, and then of course I have a bunch of tools that I want to show you guys. So let's see if anyone has guessed my costume. Ooh, Crookshanks, that is a very great guess. And you are so, so close, Agatha, with your guess. Hmm. <laughs> so I am, actually, I think I'll wait to the end to see if anyone can, else can guess if we have more people tuning in. I will announce my, my costume reveal. Um, <laughs> we want to keep it silly? Okay, I think that's a good choice. So the first thing you want to do um, is to, uh, when you're working with your pumpkin, is to obviously uh, transfer a design or, or mark a design onto it. And so we have a few tools to do that. Of course we have pencils, work okay. But a better thing than a pencil is one of these chalk markers or a dry erase marker. So these I, I picked up at KW Surplus, if you're local to Kitchener or if you have a surplus store in your town, um, they're kind of these weird waxy crayons and they just really, they work really well on the pumpkins and I really like them because you can, you can wash them off and they won't show. So I really like using the chalk marker, but if you don't have one, you can also use a dry erase marker because again, you can wash that off the pumpkin and um, you won't, it won't show. So I've got red and black and brown. And then there's another way, of course, with the, the transfer method. So I'll show you guys how I like to make my transfer paper. So this is just a strip of uh, wax paper. And I'll take that chalky crayon and I will just um, actually put my picture underneath so I can see where I need to fill in. So I'm creating essentially what's called a, a carbon paper or carbon copy paper. Your parents might know what this is. <laughs> because they used it a lot before um, like copy machines were invented. They would have a layer of paper underneath and it was pressure sensitive, so it would essentially make duplicates. And you st you'll still see this kind of stuff around today where it's got that carbon copy layer in between. <laughs> and okay, so I've covered the chalky area and uh, with like just enough for my design and I can take some tape and I'm gonna transfer this right to my pumpkin. So I'm going to just show it on the back side so it doesn't interfere with our face carving later. I like to have a little towel on my work surface to keep the pumpkin from kind of rolling away. It helps to stabilize it. So if you wanna transfer your design, I'm just gonna switch over to this camera. Okay, I'm gonna stand up for this. You put the carbon paper with the waxy side down and then you put your image on top. Actually, it should be this way, right? I can see what I'm doing. And then you would tape the whole thing down. So this is if you want to make a carbon copy, essentially, like an exact copy of your printout. And then if you take something like a, a pen, like a ballpoint pen, you can go and trace the lines and it's going to transfer that white chalkiness onto your pumpkin. And don't worry if you make a mistake because you can always erase parts that didn't work out. So I'm curious to know if anyone already knows this method or if they have another way. I know a uh, classic way is to use a push pin and you just poke, poke, poke the holes. I find this a little 
bit faster, a little easier on your hands. Because carving is, is difficult on your hands, it's a lot of pressure. Let's see how much of this design will transfer. Okay, so then you can peel it back up. All right, so when I did my, my chalky thing, I didn't realize I had to flip the image. So I actually didn't get the chalk covered enough in this area. But I can still see the outline well enough. It might be difficult for you guys to see, but you can kind of see the lines coming out. So it's not going to be 100% perfect, but that's okay. You can always go back in with your pen or your pencil. If you want to use dry erase, just if you're worried about it showing. You can always erase dry erase, right? So you can go back and fill in in any areas that didn't quite transfer. So that's a little technique for you using my favorite chalky marker. And just for the sake of the video here, I will outline it on black so it's a little more visible. All right. Good morning, Anna, Sophie, and Julian. Welcome. Oh, I want to know what your guess is. <laughs> Aga thinks, thinks Miss Norris. Ooh, very close. Oh, well, you know what? I'll do the reveal now. Yes, it is Hermione after drinking poly juice potion. <laughs> uh, this was my kind of uh, messy hair wig, uh, my yarn wig, and with the cat ears. And of course, you guessed it when Hermione drank the poly juice potion and she had the cat hairs instead of the Slytherin hairs. <laughs> Very good guess. <laughs> Mystery revealed. Okay, back to the carving. So, uh, the next thing I want to show you are some of the tools that I like to use. So some of these you, you might have or you might be able to get um, in town here because these are some of my favorite ones. And these are some of the safest ones to use actually. These come from a pottery supply store. So if you've come to our pumpkin carving workshop at Mindful Makers, you've used these. And they you know that they're they are really effective at carving away the pumpkin, but they're not sharp. So you won't it's very difficult to hurt yourself using these tools. And what they are is normally for with clay. And so they are used for removing clay and shaping clay, but they work so well on pumpkins. So we're gonna be using some of those today. I also want to show you a homemade saw. This is actually made from a a jigsaw blade glued into just the dowel handle. So the jigsaw blades have like teeth on them and I would normally use this for cutting all the way through the pumpkin. So like for example taking the top off if you want to gut it you would use something like that and you might recognize this tool if you are into printmaking. So this is a lino cutting tool and it's got very sharp blades on it. So this tool is a little more dangerous but it can get, you can get really nice details with it. It's got changeable um, blades in there, so you can change the size of how much material you're removing. Um, lastly, I just have a X-Acto blade. So this is like a scalpel blade, and I like using this for like fine details if I have to take out like small amounts um, or really, really precise lines. So I will use this to kind of carve in. And this one just has like a fancy ergonomic handle that I like to use. I also have a set of uh, wood carving chisels. Now these are actually uh, really, really, really sharp and they're meant for cutting wood, but they are super effective on pumpkins too. So funny story, um, my uncle bought these for me when I graduated from university and I don't think I've ever used them on anything but pumpkins. <laughs> so they're still pretty sharp um, and they work really, really well. I have a different uh, sizes and different shapes. So that one's a V. So this is just a, like a bigger version or a sharper version of the, 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 uh, this tool here, the lino cutting tool. So I like to use these as well. So I might use them today, I might not, we'll see. Um, but yeah, those are more specialty tools and they do cost a bit more. A couple more things, just for scooping the inside of the pumpkin guts, I just like to use a lid of a, actually this comes from like a magic bullet, <laughs> the lid for the jar. So I like this for scraping the inside walls of the pumpkin. It's really, really effective and it doesn't have like a long handle like a spoon would, so it doesn't get in the way. It can get right in there. 
and as long as it's like a uh, sturdy it will work so peanut butter jar lids anything like that and of course you'll want a bright lamp to test the uh, how much the light's going to shine through when you're doing your carving so this one's dedicated for pumpkin carving it's just covered in dried pumpkin guts so i just leave it in my pumpkin kit all right so those are my 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 tools and I'm ready to kind of move on to the tricks of the trade here. Once you've got your design um, transferred and you know where you want to carve, I'm going to show you guys a way that you can carve into your pumpkin without needing to cut all the way through. So this is just like a partial into the pumpkin method. I like to use my X-Acto blade to go around the edges to get like a nice defined uh, edge so it helps like the tool not slip further than it needs to go so this is when I'm doing like super detailed carvings I will always go around with my like scalpel blade Oop, it wasn't on there tight enough so it popped out and you can see the the pumpkin juice already coming out <laughs> the moisture is escaping so that's why it's important to have paper towels handy too I won't carve the whole thing. I'll just do the wing section to kind of show you how it works. Take your time and go around it. You can use um, a box cutter for this too. Blade away when you're not using it. And then I might go in with like the, um, the lino cutting tool and just carve away the edge. So the edges are the most important part for accuracy you always want to kind of carve from the outside in and focus on just getting an accurate cut now i'm going to grab a paper towel because this pumpkin is leaking and as the moisture comes out you're probably going to lose some of your lines so that's when dry erase is not ideal <laughs> i think the chalky marker might be more water resistant if you have an opportunity to get one of those, I do recommend it. So notice that my hand, my other hand, is not in the path of the pumpkin, or in the path of the blade on this side of the pumpkin. Anytime you use one of these tools, you have to be extremely careful. Because it could slip and you could get that it could go right into your hand <laughs> yesterday i was doing some tie-dye outside and i ended up dyeing my whole finger that's why it looks purple today <laughs> and because my glove had a leak in it so that was a surprise we have a question would crayon or pastel work maybe i think a pastel would work really well carissa that's a great suggestion Great question. A crayon? Not sure. You could try it. Absolutely. It's always worth a try if you've got it on hand anyways, right? Okay, so I'm not going very deep. You can see this is how much I've been removing. It's like almost like just so thin. Thin amounts because it's uh you're just gonna keep carving away gradually. This tool is only meant to take away small um, sections at a time and then when you're ready to start removing larger sections oh, smaller one, you can switch to one of the ribbon tools and this will you can use this to, to start carving away the rind once you have your edges done And again, I'm only taking away a little bit. When you're picking out your pumpkins, if you're trying to do like a really intricate design, something with a lot of detail, always look for one that has a very smooth surface. This one has like defined ridges, but sometimes you can find ones that are super smooth. You can be picky <laughs> when you're picking your pumpkin. go so this is just cleaning away inside of the shape now 
And if you get into a small corner, you can switch over to um, like the smaller side of your tool. So when I bought these from the Pottery Supply, the the ribbon was this side of the tool was actually much wider. So I just took my pliers and I squeezed them. So you can customize your tools and make them work um, for you, right? Modify them, make them work for what you're doing. These are pretty inexpensive, just a, a couple bucks, I think. And they'll last you a long time. And safe for kids to use. All good things. Okay, so you can see how nicely that sort of cleans it up. And you can always spend more time going a little deeper. So my little secret for getting the light to shine through is not to go super deep from the outside of your pumpkin, but to actually spend more time on the inside, scraping the walls and getting them thin using your jar lid. So you really want to thin the wall on the inside of the pumpkin. It's so much faster than just than trying to go deeper with the outside because you have to pay attention to your design on the outside and on the inside you don't. So that's again one of my little pro tips. <laughs> I wasn't sure if we were gonna gut the pumpkin on today's show. I kind of feel like that is maybe not necessary to show you <laughs> but I can show you how I like to cut the tops in case um, it's something that you weren't really aware of. Um, the way I like to, to cut the top of my pumpkin is something I can show you. But did you know you don't have to cut the top? You can actually gut your pumpkin from the bottom. So you can cut a hole in the bottom, but if you do that, you need to put your pumpkin inside of like a big soup pot because you need to protect the stem, right? I won't do that today. I'm actually gonna show you how I like to do the tops now. So I'll take my dry erase marker or my chalk marker, whatever you have, and decide what is the front. So this is actually the front of my pumpkin. And we're gonna create, of course, that lid. And you want it to be probably as small as Possible, but so that you can still fit your arm in there. You don't want to make it so big that it's going to get in the way of your design. So I feel like this big is plenty. Now when you get to the back side, of course you want to create a little T. So I usually do it this way where I create like a little V. And the reason I do that is so that when the lid goes back on, it's going to make it foolproof so there's there's no question about which way the lid fits because if you're cutting a circle sometimes you don't know um so always put like a little v mark here a little v you can be a square but i like to do v's because they're easier to carve and then i would switch to this kind of a tool with um, the teeth and my one suggestion here i'm just going to flip it is to hold it at a 45 degree angle as you're sawing all the way around. So don't hold it straight up and down because you want your lid to have that sort of a V shape so it sits nicely and it doesn't want to fall into your pumpkin. Okay. So I'll go ahead and I'll just carve this holding at the 45. Things might start to shake a little bit so okay. <laughs> So try to keep that 45 as you go around. I'm curious to see how many seeds I'm going to get out of this. Anyone out there love to roast their seeds after? If you have any special recipes, recipes for spices, please share them. I usually just go with regular salt. I want to know if anyone has like a nice sweet recipe, maybe something with cinnamon. Okay, I made it all the way around 
Give the top a wiggle. Woo! There we go. Beauty. So you can cut off the remainder of the guts from the lid. Make sure you have a bowl to collect your guts. I love roasted seeds too. Oh, and there's pumpkin guts flying everywhere already all over my camera, <laughs> all over my laptop. So you'll notice that I kept quite a, like a large angle here. So I can actually carve away now to get open that up. So if that happens to you and there's the holes quite small, just go in and carve the rest away like this. So you have enough room to get your hand in there. Ooh, this one's quite full. I'm happy with this pumpkin. I'm not going to get it now because <laughs> I don't need to. Um, I'll work on that after the show's done. But there you go. Now you can see that the lid, no question about which way it goes back on. It's got that little key. So there's my tip for you. I'm going to do a little clean up. Okay. Let's see. We're just about halfway through the show. So I think I will switch over to working on our pumpkin arms. Now that I've shown you the tools that I use and the techniques, um, if there's a little bit of time or if anybody has a question, wants me to demonstrate anything, I'm happy to switch back and do that for you. So we've gone over transferring, carving edges, carving away just the edge and then clearing out the inside. And of course you can go multi layers with this too. Like you can carve deeper and the deeper you carve, the more light will shine through. So you can create multi-level looks with your pumpkin. I'm just gonna put it off to the side and we're gonna switch gears and work on our arms next. So please let me know if there was anything about the carving you wanted me to, to show you again. Happy to do that. But we're gonna get ready to make some arms. Oh, of course, my space is a mess now. <laughs> okay. So anyone out there gonna make the arms with me today? I wanna know. I think they're gonna look so, so cool. Okay. Hello, welcome. <laughs> I'm back. So I had to stand up for that part. That's why you didn't see me on camera. So I have some goodies here that I wanna show you. Uh, how I made these pumpkin arms. And there's a reason I came up with these. There's actually an event that I'm getting ready for that I wanted to share some news with you about. Um, I've been hired to go to a Halloween event uh, next week on Halloween day for Max's Sports World. So that's here in Kitchener. And once we have some more information about that, we will be uh, sharing it on our social media about like how you can come and see. But we're creating a big um, installation there for this fundraiser they're doing and uh, what I've been hired to create is actually a, sort of a scene where you can come in and get your photo taken so they're doing all these stations for people to visit and it's all COVID safe with time tickets and spacing things out and everything's outdoors and what I've what I'm going to be creating is a Harry Potter themed um, sort of photo installation so you can kind of walk into the scene and get your photo taken on your phone and have some happy Halloween memories that way. And I'm very, very excited for dressing up all the pumpkins like the Harry Potter characters. So you may wanna make sure that you don't miss that. Follow us on social media, um, or maybe you can come and attend in person. So stay tuned and we'll be releasing more information about how you can, how you can join in, okay? Um, so the reason I'm making the arms is for those Harry Potter characters because I wanted to bring them to life and there's so many of them, I didn't want to carve them. I'm actually going to be actually dressing them up. So using more sculptural techniques and um, just adding things onto them instead of carving away. So uh, that's, my, that's my reason for having these arms. So I needed to make a couple, uh, a dozen or so. And so I thought this was a great craft to show you today on the show. And all you need to get started is some wire. So you might have a wire that comes on a roll like this. And that's totally fine but I actually ended up having a bunch of floral wire that was already nice and straight for me so what you need to do is cut them to a specific length so I'm using the measurement of 14 inches for my wires and I have five wires per hand because of course hands have five digits right <laughs> that's why we have five wires if you're crafting along with us today Go ahead and take your uh, your wire, wind it out, measure 14 inches, 
and cut that with your wire cutters or your pliers, okay? And uh, get five of those made at 14 inches, okay? I'm gonna move along ahead and just show you for um, sake of time, we, there's much steps we gotta go through. I have my TV swap outs ready. <laughs> and I just take some masking tape. Awesome. Chris is gonna watch and make these later, fantastic. <laughs> so you're gonna take some masking tape and you're just gonna wrap it around the bottom. Now I've left about two inches of the wire exposed and then I took some masking tape and this is just gonna bundle them together. <clears throat> the size of the masking tape doesn't matter as long as you just get them bundled up and you leave about two inches. This is the, the side that's going to go into the pumpkin. So we'll be able to just like jam that right in <laughs> once it's finished, okay? And then the next step is to start braiding. What we're gonna go for is in the end, something that looks like this. So we're going to split the, them into sections of three. So two wires, two wires, and then one wire in the middle. Because when you make a braid, um, you need at least three sections. I don't know how to make a braid with more than three, so this is my way of doing it. If you can figure out how to make a braid with five separate, go for it. But essentially all we want to do is twist them together and crisscross them. It doesn't have to be perfect. This, the goal here is really just to thicken the wire up and make it just one solid arm. So we're just twisting the wire, crossing over, and kind of straightening it as we go. This part is probably the trickiest part of the whole build because it takes a little bit of hanging string. And we're not gonna go the whole way. We have to stop and leave some room for the fingers. Now I saw these, these types of vine arms online as a product you can purchase. Now of course it's a little, probably a little last minute to be ordering stuff online for Halloween. Um, so I thought since I needed so many, I was gonna figure out a way to do it myself. <laughs> I'm a DIYer, right? Um, I already had a bunch of wires, so I, I gave it a shot and they turned it really cool. So as you get closer to the end, you're gonna stop when you have about, you know, an arm of, of like a hand's width of wire left because now we're gonna start to shape them into something that looks like this. I'm gonna clear some space here. Okay. So when you look at a hand, um, you can see that the thumb is kind of short and over here, but if you focus on the three fingers, the middle finger is usually the longest finger, then the uh, index finger and your ring finger are almost the same length, and then the pinky is a little bit shorter. So that's kind of what we're going for with the length of the fingers to get it to look more or less realistic. Now, of course, this is just a creature arm, so it can look like whatever you want. So I'm just kind of bending the wires down and out. And trying to get them to look like a hand. So that's where the pliers come in handy to kind of get them shortened up. You'll notice I have some loops at the end here. That helps just make them shorter and also not so pointy. So you can use your hand as a measurement if you want. You can kind of get these in place. Maybe with your thumb, you can say, okay, that's how short I want it. I'm gonna bend it down. These are almost like life, life-size models that we're making. Okay. Here, you can always go back and tweak it too. And then of course the pinky is the shortest. So I'll just kind of go like that. That looks pretty good to me. Ends up being a little bit bigger than this one. So if you are gonna make a bunch of them, just make one and decide that that's the size that you want and, and keep that one as your reference. So if I was trying to make this to match, I would actually go back and I would 
make the lengths all the same based on my first one that I made. So it's like the model, right? So that you're not guessing every time you want something to reference. Okay, that looks a little closer to the size. Other one. Super. <laughs> yes, my finger is blue. Um, I, I was tie dyeing yesterday, <laughs> so it looks like a bruise but it's because my glove had a leak and I got dye on it. It's actually looking a lot better than it did. It was looking like um, uh, pretty bad actually <laughs> before I was using purple dye. Thanks for asking. <laughs> okay, next we're gonna need more masking tape. So we have a couple sizes of masking tape and if you only have one size, that's fine, but I like to have a variety. So I'm going to use the thicker stuff. This is about one and a half inches. And I'm going to take a length of it and I'm going to create a straw. So if you've been to Mindful Makers Camp in the summer where we did tape agami, you'll be really familiar with this process where we make uh, tape sculptures. So it's the same process where you have a roll of tape and it actually works best if you put the tape between your knees. So I'm just going to kind of do this off camera. but. You put it between your knees and you have the sticky side facing away from you. And then you take the top corner, top right, and you just fold it down on a 45 degree angle. And the goal here is to get this tape to stick to itself and roll it into a straw shape. Okay, so you can see <laughs> that it's creating a straw as I wind it down. So it's really important that you keep that 45 as you continue to wind, the straw continues to get longer and longer. And as you run out of tape, you can peel more up, clamp it between your knees and keep winding. There you go. So this is a technique that um, we learned about at the Maker Fair when we went to San Mateo and we met a uh, tapeagami creator, Danny, and he was showing everyone how to create these straws. And we've been teaching it at camp, so we're actually really pro at it now. We've been doing this for a while. I'm um, pretty quick at it. It's not going to be so easy um, when you're first starting out, so just stick with it. <laughs> okay, don't give up. I'll give you a little tip next when I make my next one if you're having trouble getting your straw started. So if you take a pencil or a dowel or some, anything that's kind of round and sticky here, you can take your tape, put your pencil on the side closest to you, so not the sticky side. Remember, sticky side is facing away from you. And you're going to use your pencil to help you get that tape started. Getting it to stick initially is the hardest part. Once you get it going, once your pencil and it has helped you get your straw started, make sure you take it out because otherwise it might get stuck inside. So I'll just make another quick straw to show you the next step. You need to make a bunch of these. And of course you're gonna get better the more you make them. <laughs> Sorry, I'm making it look easy. I've just, I've done, I've, I've logged many hours of tape make, of <laughs> tape straw making. So uh, please know that you probably have a harder time with this than I am right now, just because I've practiced it. Okay, once you make a couple straws, you can move on to the next part. You can always take a break and, and make more later. So what you have is a straw with the sticky side facing out, and now it can be wrapped around your wire frame. So I'm going to start just down at the base where the, the tape is just at the base of the tape and because it's sticky side out now we can wrap it around and start to build out the bulk of your arm so I'm just wrapping and I'm just moving it up as I go I'm trying to keep some of the air inside the tape straw because I don't want it squished all the way out because we're trying to build up some bulk so it's gonna start to get kind of um, knobbly looking I guess it's not gonna be smooth and that's not the point we want it to look um, 
like a vine, right? And vines are not always super smooth. So there we go. That's how far I got with my one straw. I'm just going to take my next one and just stick it down and keep going. Ooh, so it works better if you actually just hold the straw and twist your wire faster. And you'll probably have to do a couple layers of these depending on how bulky you want your arm to be. As you get up to the fingers, you can just start to wrap around and create that palm shape because the palm needs to have some shape to it. Or kind of like a padded area. And the goal is we're trying to get to something that looks like that. This one I've already painted, ready for the painting step. Make sure you guys, sh please, please share your pumpkin photos with me this week. I love to see what people get creative with. Um, I'm a little too old to go trick-or-treating, and I'm not sure if trick-or-treating is happening this year, but I think we'll still take the dog for a walk around the neighborhood and check out all the jack-o'-lanterns. <laughs> I just love to see how people get creative with their decor. So please send us some pictures of what you make, okay? Makes me really happy to see that. Okay, another tape straw. And then as you, as you get closer to the fingers, just start wrapping around those. And anytime you can cut your straw as well, if it's too big, or, or once you get to the end. Once I get to the end, I, I want the fingertips to be kind of pointy. So I'll just cut it a little bit past the wire and then I will kind of smush it down and shape it into a bit of a point just to finish it off. And I'll use the rest of this to maybe build out the, the palm shape of my skin. So these sticky straws are so great for building, but of course you can't leave them sticky because <laughs> they'll start to pick up all the dust and whatnot. Um, so I always like to do a layer sticky side down on top and for that I might switch over to my thinner tape if you have it It's just a little easier to maneuver Especially around the fingers you can just break a piece off And you can now go sticky side down and that will sort of seal in all of the adhesive Makes it a little easier when it comes to the painting stage you could probably paint on top of the sticky side. I've never tried, but I imagine that would be okay as well. The more layers of tape you add to your arm, the stronger it'll be. So make sure that you've uh, covered all of your fingers before you move on to this stage. I'm just trying to fast track for time to show you all the steps in our one hour show. So you could just take small pieces and wrap them. You can also move the fingers out of the way as you're wrapping because they're perfect. They're perfectly poseable. That's why I really like this craft because you're going to be able to put your pumpkin in so many different scenarios. You'll be able to make it hold things. I have a little broom um, right outside my door. So I have my pumpkin holding my broom. <laughs> cool. So yeah, just wrap it until you're happy with how it looks. And then TV swap out time. <laughs> this one has been wrapped and, and with all sticky side down and it's been painted black. Okay, so this now we're gonna show you how to, to create a, a look that goes from black to uh, this kind of viney green with strings. So that's sort of the next step is doing the, the surface details. The surface finishing. So I'm using acrylic paints today and these just come from the dollar store. They work really really well. I have a few different colors I'd like to show you. So always start with the black. If you have spray paint um, and you're making a bunch of these and you want it to be really quick you could use black spray paint as well. So I've just coated the whole hand with black and I let that dry overnight. So if you have a hair dryer, that is a great way to speed up the drying time of your uh, your paint. 
but the next step we don't really need the hair dryer because we're going to be using thin layers of the paint so I'm going to start with brown and then I'm going to work my way up to the greens so this is the order I'm going to work through dark brown light brown dark green light green and I've got a couple brushes and of course you always want to have a palette handy too I like to reuse my paper plates because it's they don't need to be thrown out every time but just let the paint dry and you could totally reuse it I also have a water bucket I like to save my ice cream tubs and use these for all sorts of stuff um, if you've been to camp you will recognize our water <laughs> our water tubs um, so they're great because they don't get knocked over they have a nice wide base for for water and always wash your brushes when you're done so you'll want paper towel as well I'm going to use this one from my pumpkin Okay, we're ready to start painting. Now, I mentioned I'm going to start with the brown. Let's give it a shake. Squeeze out a little bit. About a nickel sized is great. We're going to take a brush and we're going to be doing something called the dry brush technique. So that means you dip your paintbrush in the paint and you kind of dab some of it off because you just want a very small amount on your brush. And then we're going to just lightly run your brush up and down sculpture. Okay, and it's sort of hitting all of the highlights, the high ridges of the sculpture, and it's leaving all of the cracks and the low points um, are staying black. So this is a great technique for adding realism to any of your sculptures. We use this technique often if um, with, with a lot of our sculpture projects, so if you've done gnome homes with us, or gnome homes, uh, we've used this technique as well with building up the layers and getting it to look a little more realistic. So always start with your darkest color on the base, and then you're going to work up to the lighter colors. Okay, so it's not much paint at all. <laughs> yes, I love dry brushing too, Carissa. It's so satisfying to see it really like start to come together. So I hope you guys can see that. Yeah, it's coming through. Yeah, moving from dark going up to light. And of course, the trick really is to have a minimal, minimal amount of paint on your brush. You can always add a little more, but it's difficult to take away, right? If you put too much. You could always paint it back to black, of course. Nothing, you, nothing stopping you from a redo. <laughs> You want to be happy with how it looks, right? Because you put all this time and energy. You want to be have something that you're proud of. You can always go back and fix things that you're not quite happy with. You could go back and fill in, of course, all down the arm as well. But I'm going to punch ahead to the next color. So you could wash your brush out, but you don't have to because we're kind of like moving up the color line. So you can just rub out any extra color. I want to keep my, my brush dry because if I wash it, um, it's going to be too wet. So I'll just switch over to the next color, give it a shake. I wonder if I should keep my costume on when I go for groceries today. What do you guys think? <laughs> of course I'll be wearing my mask. Okay. But I think I'll, I'll leave the face paint on. <laughs> oh, let's see. We grew one white pumpkin this year. We're going to put arms on it. it. May take us all week to make them. Hey, that's okay. Take your time. Enjoy the process. I'm so, that's so exciting to hear that you grew your own pumpkins. I have a goal of doing that myself. So I'd love to know um, how you made that happen. Do you just take the pumpkin seeds right from the pumpkin and put them in the ground? Do you do anything special? I haven't researched it at all, so I'd love to know your first-hand account <laughs> of how to grow pumpkins. Okay, so I've switched over to the light brown, and you can see I'm just, again, going over top and hitting it with the dry brush technique. And you can start to see that contrast starting to come through. Yes, I love going uh, dressed out in public, and I think we are close enough to Halloween that it's not weird to go out in public dressed up. Why not, right? Have a little fun. We all need a little more fun these days. Okay. 
we actually have a pumpkin farm uh, just down the road from us called Good Pumpkins. We, got, we picked up some specialty pumpkins there. So maybe if I did want to grow some some special varieties, I wonder if I could just take those gourds and those pumpkins and use their seeds. Or do I have to order the seeds? I don't know. Okay, so there's my brown layer. Now I'll switch over to the twine. So I'm not going to do the green yet. I'm going to show you guys how to add an extra layer of vininess. So you'll notice these ones have these sort of strings coming off of them. And for that, I'm just going to use some regular twine, which I have over here. <laughs> Ooh, you, it was a surprise, so you didn't plant it. Oh, why are vines so going? Oh, <laughs> hey, your laziness really paid off. <laughs> oh, you have still two that are still growing. Okay, well, maybe my next week they'll be ready to pick and carve last minute. <laughs> That's so fun. I wish I had secret pumpkins that just popped up. That would be nice too. Okay, so for the for the vine step, I've got just regular twine. You can get this at the dollar store, the garden center, and I'm going to cut off a length of it, so about an arm's length twine. And here's my little tip for getting the fingertips to look really cool: is you take the end of the string and you actually end up peeling away the just pull apart the fibers because it's going to create that cool uh, look that it's like splitting apart and the vines are starting to like go off in different directions. So that's makes it look really, really cool rather than just having like the one string at the end. And then when you add it on, it'll kind of have that cool viney, uh, viney look. <laughs> and now to attach the uh, string to your arm, uh, you're going to need to use hot glue. Okay, so I have my gun set up over here. Silicone pad. And I got, I brought, I'm bringing out the big guns today. <laughs> so I like using the big guns because it's got a dual temperature. It's got hot and uh, high and low. And I like to do this on low. It doesn't need to be high temperature. So I'll just throw down um, a little bit of glue on the fingertip. I'll take the string and I'll just place it so that the little frayed end is kind of poking out the end. And because it's on low, <clears throat> and if you wait like a few seconds, you can actually, I'm comfortable enough to put my hands right on the hot glue. If you have those little sil silicone fingertips, like if you have our essentials kit, you would have got those little fingertip protectors. You can use those too. Um, but I'm experienced enough that I know when the glue is um, cooled down enough, that's safe for me to touch. <laughs> so it's really, um, what you're comfortable doing, okay? So you can take the rest of your string and just start wrapping it around the hands. It doesn't need to go on tight at all. You can leave it kind of loose and flowy. And you don't need to glue it down in every section either. So I wrapped it from, I've only put glue on the fingertip and I wrapped it around a few times and I decided about here is where I want it to attach to the arm again. So I'll take it and I might just take the silicone pad and just kind of tap it down. And then keep going with it. And just wrap it however you like. Whatever looks good to you. There's really no right or wrong way to do this part. Yeah, I love having low temp glue guns because they just work really, really well, especially for felt and things like that. If you have a piece that you are, it's too long and you want to just cut it, go ahead. And then anytime you cut it, I like to leave a little bit and then just fray that other end because it just helps the whole effect when everything is like, you know, viney and spread out. Oop, here you go. Okay, so that's how you attach the twine. Just putting hot glue wherever you feel like it needs it. You can always go back and add more. And you would do this, um, you would add them about five strings because you want one coming off the ends of each finger. And yeah, it's really up to you however much you want to add. So 
once you've got all of your twine hot glued down, now we can go back and do the final stages of painting. I'm just gonna put this to the side. And we're gonna do more dry brushing, yay, with the green. <laughs> and timing's working out well because we're getting close to the end of our show. So I'm gonna ask that Carissa put all the names of the people who've said hi in the chat today in our, in our draw. We're gonna draw our viewer prize today. Make sure you're sticking around to the end or you come back if you had to leave and watch the end of the show. Where's my palette? Just a little bit of paint. Always try to teach the kids at camp not to put too much paint on their plate. It drives me bananas <laughs> when I see paint being wasted. So uh, it's good practice, just a little bit. Okay, you can always add more. And so we're gonna go with the dark green now. And again, dry brush. Just trying to add a little bit of color. And you can paint right on top of the twine. So I'm painting on top of my covered table here. I'm okay if I get paint on my table. Go right on top of the string. It'll give it more dimension if the string is like, has color in it too, right? Don't worry if you don't have the exact same shades of color of paint as I do. Just use whatever you have. And just very, very minimal amounts. Gonna do a little highlights, okay? The screen really kind of just warms it up and, and gives it that bit of color that I'm looking for. Ooh, we have our winner, drum roll. Who's our winner this week? <laughs> drum roll. I'm gonna go with the, the light green now for our final touch. This is gonna create the last highlight. Okay, Julian, wow, congrats, Julian. So you won our needle felting uh, little kit, so we'll make sure we get that out to you. And you have to let us know what color you want your ears to be, because I'll be including some wool in a, a color that of your choosing. I have pretty much every color of the rainbow, browns and blacks too. So just let me know <laughs> and I'll include that in your prize kit. Okay, congratulations. Awesome. So that's, those are my multi layers and you can see now I'm kind of getting closer to my finished sample in terms of color and look. And, and those are all the steps that you need to create your pumpkin arms. Okay, the time, make it look good. Of course you wanna wash your brush as soon as you're done with your process. So I always like to remind people about how to wash brushes properly. So if you have a tub of water, make sure you're hitting your paintbrush all the way to the bottom. You're not just swishing it around, you're beating all of the paint out of the brush. Okay, and then you can take your sopping wet brush, rub it against the edge, and then as a final step, dry it out on your paper towel. It's always a good idea to uh, dry your paintbrushes flat and not standing them up because there still is moisture in there and the moisture, if you stand them on end, will leak into the handle and it causes the wood to swell if you have a wooden handle and just means your brush uh, will deteriorate faster. So if you want them to last a long time, always make them dry flat and don't leave them sitting in the water because that'll damage them. Okay, take good care of your tools and they'll last you a long time. I have had paintbrushes that I've had since I was a young girl. Still in my collection. <laughs> okay, so I hope your hands turn out well. If you have questions, please feel free to leave a comment or email me. It's easy to get in touch. And I hope that helped you get a little bit creative and inspired for what you're gonna do with your pumpkin. I'll show you how you can stick it in. <laughs> uh, let's see, let's get our pumpkin here. I'll take the top off. And so with the wires on the end, and there we go. 
to the side of your pumpkin, you can just kind of jam it right in. There we go. And then you can pose your arm. Let's try to make it holding up a paintbrush. So we could just bend the fingers around, have fun with it. <laughs> there we go. Uh, I would say these arms are like okay to stay outside, but they're over a few days, they might start to deteriorate. So just keep an eye on them. They are sort of weatherproof. Um, you might need to do some touch ups once Halloween is over, but you can definitely reuse these for next year. And <laughs> I'm just going to show you how this ended up. Okay. My pumpkin arm and my paintbrush. I think it's such a fun project and you can use these same techniques to make other extensions for your pumpkin. You can make crazy antlers that come out. It doesn't have to be arms. You can make legs the same way. I really want to see how you take the things I've shown you today and just go wild with it. Just have fun and please, please, please send me your photos. Okay. So here is our hashtag or our, our handle and you can tag us please if you if you post a picture on your social media we really really want really want to see it and again just thanks again everyone for coming out and um make sure you come back next week where we're gonna make these adorable little last minute costume ears and i hope i wishing everyone a, a safe halloween and have a wonderful weekend we'll see you next week here on the show take care